Hi, good afternoon, and thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. My name is Patricia Houston, and I work for Family Partners of Morris and Sussex County. I also want to remind you that Family Partner is the one that brought this lunch and run to you. And today I have the honor of having Brian Doom from the Guinness Doom Foundation. Brian, welcome. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. The pleasure is for us definitely having you here and I know that you're doing such an amazing job out there helping all those families with the little loved one. So definitely it is an honor for having you here. So Ryan, tell us a little bit about yourself. So the reason I'm here today is to tell you guys about our organization, which is called the Guinness Dunn Foundation. And we're uh, about three and a half years uh, old and uh, we exist for um dogs and cats of this world pets uh, our main mission is keeping pets with their family uh, we believe very strongly that uh, pets dogs and cats birds as well any other creatures you would call a pet are very much uh, family members and uh, we're here to help people who find themselves in situations where they may have to make that tough decision for whatever reason to you know, let go of their pets, you know, for financial reasons um, and others. And so we do our best through our different programs that we offer to have to take that uh, choice away and to keep those families together, keep them intact, keep them whole uh, so that they can focus on what the actual problem is and resolve that without the concern of them being separated from their dogs, from their cats uh, or whatever the case may be. So that's our main mission, and I can explain to you the different programs that we offer in an attempt to achieve that mission. Wonderful, wonderful. And I just want to remind everybody that this Lunch and Learn is being recorded, and you can find all that information in the Family Partners YouTube channel. There we have videos with information about different resources, different organizations doing amazing things in the community. So, Ryan, I know that you have a PowerPoint. Like I said, you're more than welcome to take the lead. And once again, thank you very much for being here with us. Thank you. Well, just give me one second. Okay, Is that you see that? Yes, it's perfect. Okay, great. All right, so as I said, um, I'm coming to you on behalf of the Guinness Dunn Foundation. Um, we are a touch over three and a half years old. Um, you'll see a picture of Guinness on your screen there. He is our dog who passed away about three and a half years ago. And he is the impetus, the, the reason why we started this, uh, the uh, foundation, the Guinness Dunn Foundation. Um, my wife and I woke up the following morning uh, of uh, the, him passing, and we just said, what can we do to honor his name and keep him close? And so we started a pet food pantry, and little by little, it grew, and we added a program here and a program there based on the need that we were uh, finding and communicating with families. And three and a half years later, we have the programs which I will show you now. Uh, so Guinness will call him our founding member, yes? So the pet care assistance programs that we run are the following. We have a, we provide families with uh, a pet food assistance program where we provide them with food and supplies. We also offer families a low cost spay neuter program where we will provide them with a grant to cover the cost of a spay neuter surgery. And we also have our veterinary bill assistance program where we will write a grant to cover um, a portion of the cost for specific uh, veterinary needs for your pet. So those are the three main programs that I will speak about today. Towards the end of the um, presentation, we do have two other programs that we run. I'll touch on them lightly uh, so you can get a full picture of what we do. Um, our pet food assistance program is a needs-based program which requires the completion of an application process. Um, we Our application is pretty detailed. We ask questions about the family or the individual uh, we like to learn about them, their situation. We also have numerous questions about their pets. We like to learn about them, their health, 
uh, any dietary restrictions, allergies, et cetera. All right. Um, the application, once completed, needs to be supported by the provision of uh, financial documents. We require uh, proof of income, and that can either be in the form of pay stubs if you are an employed person or employed family. Uh, and if not, then we would look for the various award letters that one would be granted from the different benefits that are available. Once we have either or, along with a completed application and pictures of your pets, we would consider that a complete application, and then we can move forward to the next steps. Um, the link there for our application on uh, bullet point number three, that'll bring you directly to our pet food assistance application. Uh, once an applicant is successful, our board has reviewed the application and all of the documents have been provided. And we agree that there is a need. Uh, the successful applicant is eligible for a supplement of pet food uh, and supplies once a month for a maximum of six months. Okay, and we, we provide only the highest quality of foods. What I always say to new applicants is, I will not give you um, food or a supply that I will not give to my dog or cat. So whatever I'm giving you, I would be comfortable giving to my pets, okay? Um, so only the highest quality of foods, wet, dry, dog and cat food, cat litter. We often have treats, which we share with the families. They like that. And then we have your <clears throat> staples, collars, leashes, harnesses, uh, supplementations, multivitamins. Um, going back to the the um, application, the main reason why we scrutinize um, the the pets, the reason for the question questions about the animals, is we like to tailor the provisions. If it's a senior dog, we have senior food. If it's a, a cat with uh, urinary tract issues, we have prescription food that they can have that will not make their health situation worse. So we don't just throw food out the door and send people on their way. We like to learn about the family, learn about their pets and tailor our offering, our, our uh, pet food to their needs. And so we like to think that while you're working with us, you're pet is getting the best possible diet, supplements, et cetera. And then after the six months, our hope is that you can, you know, pick up responsibility for feeding your pet and, and move forward from there. The other way we work is we partner with several uh, human food pantries. Um, this is actually how we started. Um, the, uh, we, our first food pantry was actually the Loaves and Fishes food pantry here in Booton, New Jersey. Um, and then slowly through word of mouth and through knocking on doors, we were able to partner with other food pantries as well. And so we work with Parsippany, Denville. We have two pantries in Dover that we supply, St. Peter's Haven in Clifton, uh, Harvest House up in Sussex. Uh, we also supply New Hope, Sparta Community Food Pantry. Excuse me. And we also work with the Irvington Police Department. Uh, we recently supplied them uh, with uh, over a thousand pounds of dog food, and they are very good about looking after their residents. Um, so we work closely with them. Uh, Patterson Animal, Animal Shelter, and we also work very closely with Hope Hub and Community Connections. Uh, and what we do with these is, we'll, as you can see in the pictures below, we will supply those pantries with both wet and dry food. And when they run low, when those shells, for example, that you see there, which is the uh, Dover Salvation Army, start to run low, they will call us and we will get straight out there and replenish those shells so that there's never a dip in service. And um, so these are all the pantries that we work with at the moment. And families can go there on their distribution days and pick up whatever they need uh, for their pets and themselves. So it's a one-stop shop. All right. Uh, the second program that we run, which is very popular, is our low cost spay neuter program. Uh, it's very important for a variety of reasons, <clears throat> and I'll touch on it loosely 
to have your cats and dogs uh, spayed or neutered. Health reasons um, are plenty. Um, and unfortunately, though, uh, people can't afford it. It's not something that's on the top of their list. So if we tell them that we will cover the cost of it and that there's health implications behind not doing it, then we find that they prioritize this and make an effort to get it done. Uh, much like the pet food pantry, it's a needs-based program. It has its own application um, with a different set of questions um, tailor-made to the program itself. The same supporting documentation is required, uh, proof of income-wise, and pictures of the pets. And again, the application is available at that link that you see there. And once we receive all of that information, and we've had a conversation with the owners over the phone, an intake conversation, uh, successful applicants are awarded a grant to cover the cost of a spay or a neuter for their cat or their dog. And this is one of our, very much our popular programs. Our pet food pantry is by far our most uh, busiest, most popular. Uh, this would be the second. Um, and uh, at the time of getting that surgery done, we always recommend that families take that extra step and have the update of the vaccinations done. Nail trimming can be done, which is always easier when the animal is sedated rather than wrestling with them to try and get their nails done. Um, the provision of flea and tick treatments and, uh, and other things that can be done um, at a low cost. So what we always say is, look, we'll cover the cost of the spay or the neuter surgery. If you can pay $10 to have the nails trimmed, or if you can pay the $20 to get the vaccinations up to date, it's highly recommended. And most times family do that. families do do that. Uh, these are the um, veterinarians that we partner with who offer the low cost services. We have People for Animals in Hillside, New Jersey. They've been around for a very long time and this is their specialty. So people um, kind of, if you split the state in half, we will we'll push people in that direction. Father John's Animal House is in Lafayette. So people in the Northern part of the state, um, we will refer them there. They also have preferential rates. And then we have the Spay Neuter Center of uh, New Jersey in Holmdale and the ace of spays in Haynesport, and then the last one, the animal care spay in Somerdale. So between all of those, we are able to cover all applications that we get uh, from a wide ranging area around New Jersey, all offering very, very preferential rates for the low cost spay neuter. And as I said, the other ancillary extras like nail clipping, mild grooming, flea and tick treatments, et cetera. The one thing that uh, we do refer people to, to just check before they come to us directly and apply, is the state of New Jersey has their own spay neuter program. And I won't go too much into it, uh, but these are the high points of the two different programs. And based on the family situation or the individual situation, you can be eligible to pay as little as 10 or $20 to have your animal, your pet spayed or neutered. So we will often, when somebody reaches out to us to start the process, we will put something like this in front of them and say, look, before you, you know, come to us and go through our process, have a look at the state program. If you're eligible, we can guide you through that process. If you're not, then you'll work with us directly and we'll take you through our process. So uh, between what we do and our partner vets and what the state is doing with this program, um, we're able to cover a wide range of, uh, of families with different situations. Our third program that we offer is our veterinary bill assistance program. Uh, a lot of families in you know, financial distress, facing evictions, whatever the case may be, um, can't afford to pay for veterinary bills, uh, whether it's an, an emergent situation or just the basic having, you know, follow-up checkups done, vaccinations, et cetera. 
So it's a sad situation. And we find that this is one program in addition to the pet food where families are in that position where they have to make a decision. I can't afford to pay for this particular vet bill or to have my dog seen. He has some sort of a health concern and it's, you know, concerning to them. And they have to decide, do I keep the animal or do I hand him off to another organization who can care for him? So this is very much a program where we step in and take that decision away and help the, help families. Uh, again, it has in its own application, even further uh, detailed than the previous two. And it also does require the supporting documentation uh, to consider the application complete. Um, that supporting documentation is a little bit more. Obviously, the proof of income still applies. We also require an estimate from the vet. We need to understand what it is that you're looking to do. What is it? What is your dog's health concern? What does he or she need? What does your cat need? And that would come via an estimate from the vet. We scrutinize that estimate and we talk with the veterinarian as far as uh, what they're prescribing, what the surgery entails, et cetera. Um, so it, it's very, it takes a little bit longer for in this process to see a successful outcome because we want to make sure that, you know, one, the application process is complete and two, that um, what the vet is um, offering is, is appropriate. I'm not saying I'm a vet in any means, but we have a lot of experience and have been down the road with many dogs and cats over the years. So, you know, um, so we scrutinize that. And if we can also, from our experience, make the, uh, have the estimate be a little cheaper by going through it and saying, you know, you don't need this, you don't need this, you don't need this. Uh, it makes that a little bit cheaper Then families are very much appreciative of that because they look at the vet estimate they take that for gospel and they just assume they have to pay that um and the way we do it once we have a complete application and we're satisfied everything is as it should be uh successful applicants are awarded a grant uh, which will cover up to 80 percent of the vet's estimate not to exceed 500 dollars. and what we'll do is if a family has a i had a gentleman call me last night um, he had a ten thousand uh, dollar estimate in front of him uh, for a major uh, surgery. So what we'll do is we will refer families to other organizations like us who do what we do, and we will all come together to help the family pay for the bill if it's a sizable amount, such as ten thousand dollars. So I often joke that it takes a village to get something like that accomplished. Um, so we have good relationships with other organizations like us, and there are several, all fantastic people. And um, so <clears throat> all different applications pulled together will total out to be the sum of the estimate of the vet, and uh, then we can proceed with the surgery. Um, our program, our vet bill program, covers wellness checks, annual vaccinations, flea and tick preventatives, heartworm preventatives. The major thing that we find we're called for is acute injury or illness. And we will also cover, uh, we've had several of these in the sad instance where you need to uh, let your dog or cat go. We will help uh, families pay for the cost of euthanasia. Um, I've had a couple instances where families couldn't afford it. Very sad. Uh, one, that they had to let their a pet go but to be not able to afford it uh to do it humanely and in a loving way um so we stepped in and covered the cost of that um the we have several policies around this program but the main one that we have is that the guinness dunn foundation always pays the veterinarian directly uh, we work directly with the vets we pay them on the day of the surgery once we've received an invoice and we pay them very quickly, and they appreciate that. We never pay any third parties or the family. We only pay the vets. These are just a couple examples of local vets that we work with. We work with many, many more. But uh, as I mentioned earlier, People for Animals, they are the low-cost spay-neuter specialists. 
uh, in our neck of the woods. Uh, Father John's Animal House, our lovely organization up in Lafayette. Um, we have the Rockaway Animal Hospital. Um, we actually bring all of our pets there. So again, uh, I won't recommend anything that I won't do myself. So all of our family pets go to Rockaway. And we also work with Banfield Pet Hospital, which is located in all of the uh, pet stores. Uh, what is it? Uh, pet Smart, I believe. They're located in all of the all of those facilities. There's one behind the Rockaway Mall um, where we've been before. And um, to capitalize on that, this is a free voucher to Banfield Pet Hospital. Um, you can you can use this and make a of an appointment with, for example, the one behind the Rockaway Mall and the pet store there, and it will you're eligible for a free wellness check. So when families come to us and they'll say, I haven't had my dog to the vet in years, I'd love to just have him seen and make sure he's okay and in good health. Uh, we will speak with Banfield Field. We will offer this voucher this coupon to the family they will make an appointment they'll bring it with them and they'll get a free wellness banfield will you know go over the pet you know top to toe ears eyes everything and they'll let you know if there's any health concerns that uh, the owner should be made aware of so this little uh, coupon here puts a lot of smiles on faces because people uh, don't know that it exists uh, as i said at the get-go these, those are the three core programs that we offer. I just went through uh, the the other two to round out five programs that we offer. Uh, we have a mobility car program, wheelchairs. We offer wheelchairs to families in need. Uh, we have an inventory of, pro of wheelchairs that we get from the top two manufacturers in the country. And they will, uh, what they do is they tell their families that if you don't need your wheelchair anymore, please donate it to the Guinness Dunn Foundation. And so once we get it, we'll clean them up, refurbish them if needed, and then we will offer that out to a family once they apply. It's an application-based program, but it's there if anyone should ever need it. Um, we also have a capital build shelter program, which basically is for rescues and shelters. We have a grant once a year where we, uh, you can apply and we will cover the cost <clears throat> to build, extend, improve upon your existing footprint, your existing shelter, your existing rescue. And uh, I particularly enjoy that to see the, <clears throat> you know, the current facility and then the enhancement that's been made as a result of our grant. So, um, that those two round off the five programs that we offer. Uh, this is the a flyer that we're well known for. It basically lists out all the programs, our contact information, how to get us. It's a little catchy with the uh, dogs there. So uh, this is how we're known. You'll find this um, posted at a lot of food pantries around the state. And uh, so this is how people know what we do and how to reach out to us. And this is our contact information, um, our office number. That's my particular cell phone number that people are always welcome to call me on. And our email and our website, which shares all of our programs, all of the applications related to those programs. And we're always trying to expand upon that and build the website out. Uh, time is always an issue. And then I wanted to cap it off as I started. With our founding member this is guinness here uh he loved the water uh he also loved to hang out in the living room with us and that's him in his wheelchair um as he was a senior boy and that's why we started the uh, mobility car program so um that rounds off uh the guinness dunn foundation and and what we do and the programs that we have to offer Wonderful. Thank you very much, Fry. Uh, like I mentioned at the beginning, it is an honor for us to have you here. 
And it is a beautiful cause, what you're doing in, and the team that is helping you as well. So thank you very much. I want to remind everybody that the contact information, everything is going to be also in the description box below of this video. And if you know someone that needs help, all that information is going to be there. So you can just share the video and they can get in contact. With that, we are going to move to our Q&A session that part is not recorded. Thank you very much.